how I see Sri Lanka in 10 years is a very challenging question, I think, because honestly, I have never thought about it because it's very difficult for us to think about our tomorrow living in a country like Sri Lanka. Uh, it is very unstable and um, unsettled. Decisions are changing. Um, the the police policies are changing and because politicians are changing. Mm -hmm. And it is, the government is there, but the politicians are the driving force of the government. Sri Lanka has faced climate-related disasters in the past four years. We've had major floods, we've had droughts, and a lot of that is to do not just with the international level of how badly conservation has gone wrong, but also to do with our own I suppose ignorance when it comes to climate change because you see forests are the regulators of the climate and they not only they provide a catchment area and they provide effectively a barrier from areas being submerged underwater. That is what forests provide. So unfortunately when it comes to rainforest there's hardly anything left. The rainfall patterns will change. Uh, instead of being predictable as the monsoons used to be, they will become more unpredictable, they will become more erratic, there will be heavy bouts of rainfall, um, and there will be periods of drought in between. And we are already seeing that happening. internationally as a climate hero for putting sort of Maldives on the map as a vulnerable state, but that just isn't present in this current Britain. Um, but still, uh, having said that, in the international fora, I think Mali still takes a leading role in the smaller and more mm -hmm. community. In fact, it so, shares the yeah, yeah, it's, it's a current share. So, so internationally, yes, um, we play a huge role. I mean, with other small island states, but uh, as I said, when it comes to local politics, uh, yes, yeah, translating there. that international sort of image into actionable um, local policies, it's just not that. A lot of the problems that we discussed about corruption and lack of uh, accountability by institutions and human rights um, issues, um, I think it all comes boils down to um, having good governance standards and uh, democratic system in the country, um, which I think will translate into positive changes in the other areas that we discussed here. It's very disheartening to see these things and the increase of temperature. Like this is something that you daily feel. Like 2015 was the hottest year and then 2016 became and then at one part of the country there are floods and then there are another, say, other half of the country severely affected by the drought. So these things are unprecedented. It has been the third consecutive year that Colombo was hit by floods but there is still there is no program. It's not that our people don't have that capacity. We have the capacity, but there is no program. And people outside the government can do very little. There's always this sort of like tension between sustainable development and the environment. Mm -hmm. The question sustainable environment, but the, I think um, there's um, they, they're not mutually exclusive the way um, a lot of politicians in the Maldives do it. Um, for them, development is reclamation, harbors, it's all like this um, huge... Aesthetic stuff, buildings, yeah. infrastructure, plastic aesthetics. Yeah. Yeah. Concrete and plastic aesthetics as opposed to green um, and um, aquamarine sort of... Um, and and it's, it's kind of ironic because we Maldivians kind of like to project ourselves as the most vulnerable uh, country as far as the climate change is concerned and then but when it comes to the work we do yeah. we, we, we are the people who are destroying the coral reefs Sri Lanka is a developing country we definitely need to develop and we need our ports and our infrastructure projects but also we need to make sure that it's done in a conscious and sustainable manner and the message of sustainable development is something that we really need to um, like rigorously advocate for so that its environmental impact is considered in every development aspect, in every development decision making. From the beginning or maybe from our establishment in 1981, we have been closely working with government departments. 
because we know like people they are though in those institutions or uh, authorities are also sometimes their hands are really tightened they can't take the technical decision because there is a lot of outside pressure coming in the various government departments that run our various protected area uh, tiers and designations all have their own agenda so for example the singaraja rainforest is a national forest reserve under the department of forest conservation unfortunately the department of forest conservation or dfc they're not the best when it comes to conserving and protecting such lands usually what happens is through political interference they're by the force to offer their own monetary benefit they will give out lands that are protected under the forest conservation ordinance um to people investors multinationals essentially to make a quick buck focus on it as much because these are like this isn't um the huge immense natural disaster that happened in 2004 but this is a slow man made progressive one that's affecting all of us yeah. and because it's not happening on the same scale as the um 2004 tsunami doesn't mean it's not as bad in fact this is even more insidious in the sense people don't even like it's not covered in the media it's not in the public conscience you but it is it happening day. yeah yeah you see it every day i mean you feel it every day the islands feel it every day they they can't plant crops they have to move even further inland even when they do it doesn't help and then there's even more flooding than before and it lasts longer so yeah it's it's yeah it's a slow tsunami it keeps coming every year and it comes in further inland every year it's hard for people to see that it's also hard for the um international um um media to see that it's hard for like people who live in the US or or um more developed countries to see um what's happening there because it's it's a slow it's, it progresses slowly in in the well in comparison to the 2004 tsunami it's yeah i feel that there's um there's the public conscience of the maldives that I mean, most people don't have that climate change um um sort of narrative in 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 their minds i think for a lot of people it's very painful to think of um existential threats yeah. and maybe perhaps yeah. that's i mean we've always lived on these islands our, our um ancestors have lived on these islands so we've been connected to these islands and it's very hard for people to even discuss that maybe 50 years from now these islands may not well, be yeah. there anymore I mean, just people just don't don't speak about it. it's just people who um in policy circles you might have these discussions but for example in our daily lives we might not have that discussion but um it's always at the back of our minds right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean like our parents generation, I mean if I tell them that do you know that there's a lot of studies that show that in 50 years time your island will not exist, she wouldn't believe it. And it's definitely easier to have this conversation today than it was a few years ago because the effects of climate change is even more apparent now that and it has been a really steep um steep line there where where we climbed up um in seeing these effects. We have a tradition of lighting a oil lamp when there is a, um, a ceremony or any auspicious time. And uh, the cult- uh, lighting of the oil lamp is not a religious thing. It is just a cultural thing. So even the Muslims do that. The Christians also do that. So when we light a oil lamp, it is that enlightening the room. So that is a symbol for everybody's well-being. So such things are there even there is an environmental event we light the oil lamp no matter which religion or which race you are belong to them. in the end um the bottom line is that climate change affects all of us uh, even if you if you are a small country or even if you are a big um developed country so um just because um we have the front seat to climate change um effects it just means that we have to be even more active in in this um in in advocating for climate change action in a nutshell i think what the country needs is a national policy that's not going to change depending on which regime comes into power whoever comes in there needs to be a set agenda saying this is what's going to happen it doesn't matter whoever comes in this is what needs to be followed right now it's just whether it's rajapaksas or the maitri palas which are who's ruling right now so it all depends on who is in power at that time we have been doing so much in terms of awareness raising 
using mass media above the line and below the line uh, communications and uh, we were successful in many ways because there are so many other groups who are now active on the on the field of environment conservation and focusing on singharaja and our rainforest so that's that's a good thing and we are doing school programs and we have planned one for january as well we are taking five school children five schools from singharaja sur area surrounding singharaja because they are the ultimate beneficiaries of singharaja and they are the ultimate protectors they will be the ultimate protectors of singharaja so that's the younger generation we are educating so we do so much but there's so much we have to with with climate change i mean it's, it's not something that can be done separately it, it's mm. part of a country's development and growth you know um once once people have their basic needs attended to and you know once they're getting um you know that luxury of being able to think about things beyond you know your own family or your own community i think that is it's it's not something that can happen overnight it's going to take time and our i think approach to it is you know while that may be true we are going to make sure that we are engaging communities yeah. um try to trying to bring about any positive change that we can during during that time period because to let go would be to give up um but i know that global families are there the communities are there uh, like minded people and uh, i really believe in great turning one day every human being will understand that climate change is killing us if we try we can stop it